welcome to a beautiful snowy Istanbul where Ollie and I are going to escape from the cold wintry weather by starting our tour of the tastes of Istanbul in its famous Spice Bazaar. Built in 1660, the bazaar houses over 80 shops selling delicacies such as spices, dried vegetables, baklava, and of course, Turkish delight. To guide us through that maze and to tell us all about the wonderful flavors of this extraordinary city, we'll be joining Leila. Now we are in the Spice Bazaar. Spice Market is the second largest covered bazaar of Istanbul. Istanbul, strategically located between Mediterranean and Black Sea, it has always been a very busy center of trade. Let's have a walk. Right. We have 91 shops here, mostly spices, delights, wonderful tea mixtures, lovely pomegranate tea. Pomegranate is very important because it symbolizes abundance. You see a lot of pomegranate and pomegranate tea here because pomegranate is just one fruit, but when you cut it open, it's a lot of seeds. Initially, Spice Bazaar, when it was first built, they were making soaps and medicines for the royal family. But today, Commerce took over. I'm going to take you a small shop. We're going to enjoy some okay. pomegranate tea and some uh, delights. Turks love delight. Delight? as a very old recipe and Europeans visiting Istanbul at the time I'm talking about 17th, 18th century when Istanbul was very rich when Europeans found this land they tried to learn about the recipe of this which, which was a great failure because starch, corn starch we use in making Turkish delight was used back in Europe only for powdering wigs in cosmetics. So they couldn't figure the recipe. It was kept as a secret till the um, 19th century when the King Otto, mm. the Greek King Otto's chef, he figured how to make Turkish delight. Ever since, people know about Turkish delight, but I think why Turkish delight is Turkish delight is because the recipe was kept as a secret for so many years. So when it's something mysterious, that makes it even more special. Absolutely, yeah. It's one of my favorites. Oh, this looks so Oh, wow. It's cornstarch, honey. Oh, I've got two. <laughs> what a shame. Cornstarch, honey and pomegranate. I've never had anything like that before. It's not too sweet because it's made Lovely, with honey. It? This one, very interesting. Look at that. Rose petals. Beautiful. Turkey is a big rose producer, so we use a lot of rose water, rose petal. This is pomegranate. Start your um, orange. And this is what kids love. White chocolate. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. White chocolate and almond. This one is nice and um, tangy, isn't it? Mm, I love it. <laughs> and that's another, this is another thing, uh, tea mixtures. In the Spice Bazaar, imagine, 17th century, so that's more than 300 years. Usually, it's like the business is passed down from one generation to the other because it's a very profitable job. Mm. Thousands of people come every day to shop from the Spice Bazaar. The business is too profitable to just give away. Usually, it's family-run businesses. They've been doing this for so long time, but they have exactly the taste and they have the skill. They know how to mix, how to blend things, both spices and tea. Have a look at this. I mean, I wish you could smell. Look at these with the flowers. This is called love tea, all around it, pomegranate tea. Oh, wow. Wow, <laughs> you have to smell that, Stephanie. Dr dried yeah. strawberries. Some oranges, and you see some rose as well. It smells amazing. This one's called relaxed tea. And look at the pomegranate oh, flower. Did you know pomegranate had a flower like this? No, 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 I had no idea. So beautiful. This and these are amazing. The look, room. this is like a floral bouquet. And I guess they open up when you put them in the water. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, it smells yeah. some, it really smells like rose. This is amazing because when you put it in the water, they open up. So you've got, this, you've got these beautiful flowers in your tea. I think I might have to get some of this. Wow. We're going to enjoy some pomegranate tea here. That's incredible. And here is the plain pomegranate tea. Yes, we're going to have some of that. I'd love stuff. to try this. Much as I love Yorkshire tea, this does look a little bit different, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. So that's I this. I love this tea. I have to take some home. Yeah. Mm. You see, these are real pomegranate seeds. 
flowers, everything all mixed together. It smells wonderful. It you just it works in a French press. You just put it like one teaspoon, uh, one teaspoon, and then just you know brew it for like 10, 10 seconds. Your tea is ready. No sugar added, so it's the real stuff. And this is Shehmuz Abi Meraba, Turkish tea from the Black Sea re region. We we have this tea called Rize Çayı. It's tea leaves, basically loose tea leaves. Turks drink ten cups a day. It's ten big, cups a day. Ten so cups a day. More, more than British. More than British. More than Chinese. Yeah. Like I can't believe capital. you beat the British. We beat the British, we beat the Chinese. <laughs> tea is very important because we have lots of tea. That's another reason. Every little bazaar has their small tea shop corner because tea takes time to brew. During your Istanbul visit, if you see some guy just showing up out of blue with their tray filled with I've tea, that. that's him. That. He's just going, he doesn't need to get calls. He just goes for a random every 15 minutes. He goes to, to one side of the bazaar and just he gives people tea because he know that Turks drink tea like we would drink water. So you don't need to get a call. He just goes, gives away the tea, and then the other 15 minutes, he goes to the other side. And you know how you order your tea yeah. here? Sağ ol Şehmuz abi. You do this. This is the gesture to order tea. You don't need to call the waiter or just wave and then ask something. You just do like this from a distance. <laughs> that means tea. I'm going to try that at yeah. home. Try you think that's going to work if I just do that at home? <laughs> I think you should go and see. I'm going to try and train everyone at home. Saffron is a special flower. From every flower, you can just get three. Stamens. Just three of them. It has been always a very valuable spice because it's very rare and it's difficult to collect all of this. And it's from a crocus, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Imagine all of yeah. this. How many flowers would oh, that be? Just thousands Hundreds, and thousands. thousands of yeah. them. Yeah. There's about to be some opening of some caviar here. <laughs> so we've, we've got basically Turkish delight, pomegranate tea and caviar. It sounds amazing. That's <laughs> that meal, is it? Yeah. Nice afternoon snack. This is amazing. Iranian caviar in Turkish spice bazaar. Wonderful. You have to give a little tap on the gold box. That is a lot of caviar. Wow. Look at oh, that. Mashallah. Isn't that incredible? Mashallah, mashallah. You know, I've never had real caviar in my life. Oh, this, this is, is a big a moment. This is a first moment. <laughs> Fishy. Whoa. <laughs> it no, it's really good. Yeah. I've had lump fish caviar, you know, which is the cheap stuff, but that is quite something. Mm. Yeah, amazing, good. amazing flavors. It's almost buttery. It melts in the mouth. It's delicious. I've seen it in very expensive shop windows in London. But I've never <laughs> seen so much in my life. So we're going to get some pomegranate tea from here for Stephanie. Yes. yes. And some love tea for Oliver's oh, wife. Yes. Of course, <laughs> Oliver needs love tea. I think a few little roses just to put in the occasional cup of tea. So yeah, it's exactly. Beautiful. beautiful. We grow yeah, a lot of rose. place mm -hmm. roses. Rose is used as well, as well in cosmetics, not only yeah, in the, the cooking or in the kitchen. We make uh, soaps with rose. We make uh, some cosmetics such as cologne. So we have tea. For Stephanie and yes. your love, my love tea for Camilla, and it's so loving. I've also got some additional roses. To throw. You're a very loving man. So romantic. Wonderful. Right, let's go on. Wherever you see a covered bazaar, then you need to look around, you'll see a mosque and next to it a madrasa where they taught theology and next to it a hospice. This is what we call in Tur classical Turkish uh, Ottoman architecture, külliye. Külliye are uh, several buildings that are built together and financially supported each other. So take the Spice Bazaar, we have 91 shops here and the revenues coming from the rent from the shops were used for upkeeping of the mosque or hospice next door or madrasa next door. And this building was built on the 17th century with the mosque next door, what we call new mosque. It's not new at all, it's called new mosque because it's a short word for New Queen Mother's Mosque, New Mosque. So that mosque outside is huge. And this one 
were built together for this purpose. They were financially supporting each other and they generated social life. We've just spotted goat cheese aged in goat skin. Well, I guess... Now, in... this is something I have never seen before. So there's actually cheese uh, inside this goat? I do. Yeah, Tulum in goat the main town of Marwood. The places I always like to show people are places with an old establishment date. Look, if a place has been doing a job from 1946 or more than 50 years, same job, I think they got to be doing something good. Try some goat oh, cheese. Thank you. Have some too, please. I'll have some. You want to have some? It's matured, it's aged in the goat thank skin you. here. You see? Very salty. Quite different than feta cheese. Oh, wow. Very strong. That's got a kick to it. That is delicious. Because it's aged in the skin. Turks love to use every part of animal. Yes. Coming from nomadic, as a nomadic tribes. We are used to using every part of animal. Mm. So we like to age the cheese inside that skin. Yeah, there you can buy it in the goat skin. You well, shouldn't go to the supermarket and buy goat cheese inside goat skin. No. <laughs> That's not the answer. It's quite nice, salty, very strong. Consistency is beautiful. You know what it goes well with? Oh, look at this. Oh, Raku. Oh, this is, this is pastrami. Oh, Shall we share some here? Yeah, no, you have some. I'd love some. Look, thank what's, you. What's outside is what we call chemen, the mixture of seven spices, including turmeric, including fennel, black pepper, Hungarian paprika, red bell pepper paste. So what makes Turkish pastrami um, special is the spice coverage around it. It's quite a delicate, interesting taste. It's a heavily seasoned, cured beef, basically. Oh, have some. No, I'm excited, really, to try some of that. Amazing, the herbs on the outside. It's so delicious. Mm -hmm. It's incredible, isn't it? That would be in my shopping list. Me too. Oh, I would love some of that. Mm -hmm. I feel really bad that all of you watching can't taste this. It's very delicate. The meat is so, so fine and just melts away. And but the flavor of the look. spices is incredible. The word pastrami, we believe, it's believed here, that is derived from this Turkic noun pressure, bastırma, because original recipe of pastrami involved uh, beef meat being placed on a saddle and then riders, as they were just on the horseback, they were on the go, they were pressing the meat in between their thighs. So that's <laughs> pressing. That means bastırma in Turkish, pressing, pressure. And in Armenian, basturma. Wow. And there you go in English, in, uh, in many other languages, we say pastırma, pastrami. In Turkish, it's pastırma. It's amazing. I mean, I do that actually whenever I ride. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the only way of doing it. She has the right outfit for it too. <laughs> you, can, you can tell. In the Spice Bazaar, you don't only have spices. Turks love backgammon. They're lovely, yes. They're beautiful. So you, can, you can have a cup of tea whilst playing backgammon. Exactly. You see, you have some with a um, mother of pearl. Oh, it's not lovely. No. Very beautiful. Travel size. A little backgammon. Backgammon, a cup of tea. A very Turkish way of spending your next half hour. Absolutely perfect. I love the black one in the middle. Mm, yes. Quite elegant, yeah. yeah. Mother of pearl is extraordinary. Yeah. Now in Turkey, of course, in the spice bazaar, we gotta try some spices. In Turkish cuisine, we don't eat very spicy. Our Kurdish brothers and sisters eat more spicy food. We don't like spices to take over. Most common spices we use here are chili flakes, smoked Aleppo pepper. If there's only one spice on the table, that would be chili flakes. We use sumac for like potato salad. You just drizzle a little bit, mix it with olive, Ooh. olive oil. Absolutely delicious. Sour. It's an alternative sour. How hot are it's, they? It's not hot. It's very mild. It's very mild. Okay. Still talking. That's actually very, very good. Okay, now the ultra it has got that fiery that's going through my entire mouth. But not the heat that really kills you. You can still taste other flavors with that. Mm. Ultra ordinary. Everything. Dried mint, isot, and other kind of spicy pepper. Sumac. Sumac is a berry. It's a kind of an alternative citrusy taste. It's a lemony taste. It's wonderful. Stephanie, have just a little bit of this because this might be spicy. Is this hotter take, than take the, the other one? Was hot enough? <laughs> Oh, a nice kick. And I had one seed. What is it? Is that chili? It's... <laughs> oh, pardon, pardon. Pardon. 
Tamam affedersin. Bir de şu zahterden göstereceğim. Something nice and mild. Some zahter. This is thyme. It's a mixture of thyme, sesame seed. I love This that. This is wonderful. We, we mix it with olive oil. And it's a nice, nice breakfast spread, breakfast dip. That one, that and the sumac. Zahter, sumac. Mm. That's incredibly good. Something sesame in there, isn't it? Mm. These spices, they taste so fresh, don't they? They do. These are dried, air-dried vegetables, eggplants, red bell pepper, and the, the next to it, the green one on the on the thir third one on the left, is courgette, mm. and zucchini, and then we have okras, baby okras. They're very small, little tiny baby okras because they were collected when the flower was still on the plant. Oh. What we do, we make some stews with them. We mix it with lamb or chicken. We make okra and lamb stew. And the rest, we stuff. Turks, in this, if you come to Istanbul or Turkey, you will discover Turks love stuffing everything. Vegetables, mussels, intestines. We had stuff. If you can stuff it, you'll stuff it. So. We'll stuff it. So come to Turkey, enjoy some stuffed veggies. You will like it. This is another very interesting and old tradition. It's basically when you scoop out the vegetables and then dry them, you can preserve them for all year. So when we have fresh, nice, cheap vegetables in summertime, we dry them this way. In a Turkish village, you can find people dry vegetables on top of their houses. This is an activity of a Turkish village uh, woman all together, they gather. It's like a ritual and there is a time of the year in summer people make preservation for pre preparation for winter and uh, preparing vegetables this way is very, very common. They are also very light to carry. So one string contains, let's say, 20 vegetables or 25, 100 gram only. So it's quite easy to carry with you if you live as nomadic tribes. But when you are, when you cook them on the spot, stuffing them with rice or bulgur or meat, it becomes a very nice full saucepan of nutritious, filling food for the whole that can feed all family. Baklava? So delicious. That's Camilla's favorite. Yeah, me too. So a good baklava should consist of 40, 40 layers of very thin phyllo pastry. Baklava is a very old Turkish tradition as well. It's our favorite dessert. So a good baklava should sound crunchy when you put your fork on it. And then of course tastes, you should be able to feel the butter. Thank you. You have the best food. Ah, thank you. I love the little nests. Look at the little nests oh, here. Nests. Lufa shop. Istanbul is kind of bordered with sea. We are on a peninsula. We are sitting in between Mediterranean and Black Sea. So there are lots of ponch hunting. It's a very old tradition too. But here we have two kinds of lufas. One from the sea, sponges. This one. And this is actually a family you wouldn't be able to guess maybe, but it's what zucchini. It's a family of a courgette. It's a big, huge zucchini, dried zucchini. And then this is a olive oil soap they use in the hammams. So remember, Spice Market was initially made to provide medicine and soap for the royal family. Spices trade took over later. So soap, still we, they sell a lot of soap and sponges. In Turkey, of course, not all the spices are from Turkey. This is uh, dates from Jerusalem. These are jasmine, from Iran. Oh, my flower. Oh, thank you. I'm his flower now. Thank you. It's a gift. Very kind. It's a gift. Thank you. Would you like to try my love tea? Be in love with me? Oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> so, sorry. I'm just trying to be your time. Thank you. It's very... So the the, 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 oh, these guys yeah. are always very funny. You know how they they will, they will always have, find a way to get you. They say, are you from Portuguese? No. Are you from Athens, Greece? No. Spain? No. Heaven? <laughs> well, I guess this gentleman. His expertise is making interesting perfumes. Perfumes that matches to your personality. Oh. That's what he does. So Stephanie, what's your sign? Uh, Leo. Aslan. Bir önce alerjisi var. 
You have an allergy. Do you have an allergy of something? To something? Um, I have allergies. Yeah, she does. Right now you have a problem with your lungs. I and do. Your, right yes. now, yes, she's been a little... Um, um, okay, you need you need to relax because you're you, you kind of you're putting it, mm, you're overloading yourself sometimes with lots of jobs like lots of things that. I told you only to stop overloading me with jobs. Um, yeah. Çok da darbe yer diye. Çok tam teslim olduğu için. Okay. Okay. He's saying you gotta stop just not saying no to people. You know just. Take a step back. Take a step back. Okay. Yani sizin ifade de biliyor ama anlamıyorlar bu çağ daha çok görev kendini zorlaması. Yeah, that way you'll get less tired, he says. He's not the first person to tell me. Right. The perfume that would match you would contain some li liliac. Liliac. Lilac. 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 Yeah, that's violet. beautiful. Violet. Bakayım. Yeah, bu, bu da silk. Ah, okay. Sağol, teşekkürler. That's what you say in this, in Turkey. Right. We say teşekkür ederim or sağol. Sağol, I said. And if you do this gesture, right hand, on left uh, on the heart that's a nice thing thank you very much thanks so much so he just wanted to offer us some tea that's what a turkish person would do so you see turkish tea needs two parts to make this part is filled with hot water boiling water and here we have the tea leaves kolay gelsin people buy their tokens at the beginning of the week uh -huh. so you don't have to you know fuss with money i mm -hmm. like that it's, it's that's the coin yeah <laughs> It's a system based on trust, yeah. actually, and you know, to, because tea is something quick, and people don't want to just deal with the money quick, fast. That's why you buy some plastic coins. So if you if you drink ten cups a day, how many would that be all over for a week? At least um, 100, 70. Uh, 70, but in the, <laughs> I'm I mean, good at math. You, you have visitors too, so make oh, it yeah. 200, 300. Yeah, yeah. Two or three hundred. Three hundred. That means like one lira. Tea is one lira here, the cheapest thing. Oh wow, one That's lira. That's one lira. That's why people keep you offering tea, because yeah. it's like it's like water, and it's a wonderful way of yeah. starting a conversation and breaking ice. So enjoy your tea. So you know, it's interesting. So that the the Turkish have a reputation for hospitality. And you kind of think sometimes these reputations don't really mean much. But since we've been here, it's been amazing. Everywhere we've been, it's just been incredible. Everyone's been so friendly and so yeah. hospitable. I wanted to pay, but this guy here just said, oh, take it, this is on me. This is a wonderful example of Turkish hospitality. So I'm a very secular woman. I'm, I come from a very liberal, liberal family. But you can see he's quite from a different, from a different perspective, I think, the way the way he looks, but he doesn't mind me having my hair open. I don't have a head scarf or anything. And he just likes to show no matter what perspective I am at or I look at life. He just ordered the tea. He always had a smile on his face, but we really diff definitely we come from different uh, walk, different paths of life for sure. But there is tolerance. The tolerance is really important. Yeah. And I think we need that more and more, don't we, in these days in we the world? We definitely do, definitely. And I love the fact of they trade you... bringing people together. We all have to shop, don't we? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Some more than others, definitely. I have a special request, which is a little bit odd. Much as I love the spices and the caviar, I want to go and see the leeches. Of course you do. Because as we, as we heard, this started, you said, as a place for medicine for mm -hmm. the sultan and so forth. And I guess leeches are a key part of medicine. I've never yeah. tried them. Maybe this could be my moment. This Some. is what I came to see. Wow. Dad. Look at them. You're going to name one, Ollie. Uh, and these, leech. look, the, these ones, the small ones are they are. They all have different be health benefits. Small ones are used for eye pressure. Look. Ooh. Ooh, la, 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 la. Wow. Look at and that. these are the benefits. Health benefits are listed here. Rheumatisma, eczema, even toothache. They're quite darling, really, aren't they? And are these quite popular? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> but yes, they are. Look, there are, this is just the back street of the Spice Bazaar. So it's the central of central of Istanbul. And 
this is not the only le leech seller. It's the fifth or sixth that we just we just saw. Yeah. So it must be popular amongst very traditional families. Wow. But I've heard sometimes hot, some hospitals as well. Mummy is on eye drops for eye pressure, so you reckon I should take some leeches? I that? think that so would not do wonders her. for mother-daughter relationships. <laughs> Stephanie! <laughs> <laughs> when you visit Istanbul, you will see on the streets of Istanbul three red food stalls. Okay. And therefore, three fa favorite three cheap eats. Favorite of Turks, three cheap eats. Simit, it's a pretzel. It's an iconic Turkish food. <laughs> Simit. Oh, it looks delicious. Wow. It's a pretzel dipped in grape molasses and covered in sesame seeds. Everywhere in Turkey, especially in Istanbul, you'll see Simit. Simit is an iconic food of Turkey. <laughs> okay, there you go. And. The other thing you see always on the streets of Istanbul is corns. And the other one is chestnut. Oh, wow. Quick bites. If you just want to skip lunch because you want to go back home for a family dinner, you just get a simit, some sweet corn, grilled, or... Oh, you see three of these at the same. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, it's so good. The smell of it is amazing, isn't it? Oh, yes. The corn is the one that does it for me. Does it? Yeah, it does yeah. look amazingly good. Yeah. When you come to Turkey, what you need to pay attention is everything. Your meat or whatever it's cooked should be cooked on chalk roll. The key to yeah, wonderful taste. Wonderful. Even your simit. Look at that. We're going to enjoy some wonderful simit heated on charcoal fire. Everything. Joiner should be on charcoal. Meat, every meat. Charcoal is the should, key. I think we should buy one. Wonderful, thank you. You have that one. I'm going to have some corn. Okay. Have some corn. That's amazing. And so warm. This is the most delicious street food. It's so simple, yeah. Absolutely. Evet, pesra yok mu? I love pigeons. Pigeons wow. are my favorite so, birds. What's <laughs> bugger? That's a very Turkish thing to do as well. <laughs> some for us, some for the animals. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Oliver, chestnuts. Very delicious. So warm for you. Oh, it's so good. It's actually, just as a hand warmer, it's so mm. nice. It's very tasty, I don't want to eat mine because I'm using it as a handy hand warmer. Oh, <laughs> but it's really nice. Take it down there. So I'm sure everyone knows this ice cream trick. That, you know, the guys just don't give... I ice cream guys don't give you the ice cream. Just ice cream cone. They just kind of give it to you, but... They just pull it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a show for tourists and children. But what's interesting about Turkish ice cream is that the ingredient, one ingredient is quite surprising. It's called salep. Salep gives ice cream the density, consistency. And it is actually orchid root. So the root bulk of a wild orchid is processed into powder mixed with milk Instead of gelatin, wow. that's how guys can just spin it and it never falls down. It's amazing! Let's start you. Let's get some with pistachio. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> that's insane! Explain! <laughs> 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 where it went. Is it in the bag? <laughs> 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 Bye bye. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, goodness. bye bye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hello, I'm Chok Tishik. Thank you. It's like a Yo, magic trick instead of just getting no, ice cream. I just wanted to show you the olives. There's, have you ever tried grilled olives? This morning, for the very first time, I breakfast. I've never had a grilled olive before. Big grilled oh, olives. So good. And here, look. This is marinated in blueberries, and that one pink over there is marinated in beetroot. Beautiful colors. This is from Antioch, from uh, Antakya area. This is um, with garlic, wild, kind of, it's a kind of a herb, herb cheese, Turkish mozzarella. Oh, ops, ops. beautiful. We lost one. Incredibly good. Huh. More flavor than Italian mozzarella. Stephanie, some pepper for you. Thank you. It's sharp. 
delicious. Mm. We grow a lot of pistachio, and um, this is this one is pink, a little sour, because it's roasted in lime, and that right. makes it go pink. Yeah, yeah, it's, oh, look at that beautiful. Wow. Pink and sour. Mm. Huh? That's really good. It's really good with the cheese we just tasted. I know, yeah. Well. Great combination. <laughs> it's red grape leaves, quite popular in Turkey because it's the labor of love, because it's an intense, very labor intensive dish. It's difficult to prepare, it takes time. That's why when you have a guest, it's kind of a nice thing to offer to your guests. It shows how much you care about them. We use a lot of wine leaves. We stuff them with the rice, with some herbs, sometimes with meat, sometimes without. But whatever you stuff your wine leaves with, if the wine leaf, the leaf itself is not nice and tender, then it's very chewy and not nice. Have a look at this. Very tender. Oh, wow, yeah. They are kept in brine for preserving them so that they are available all year round. It's a very Turkish thing. So you open a fridge, Turkish fridge, there are a couple of things that you, for sure, they're always there. There is a batch of wine leaves too, in case you have a visitors at the weekend. Wealthy Ottomans, when they wanted to donate for the society, they always mm, help construction of a fountain. Fountain, still functioning, you can drink. This is the coffee shop where Turks love come and you know shop their freshly grinded coffee. This melt is always here, sometimes much longer, but melts very quickly. Look over there. Wow, so they're going right around the corner yeah. and paying over there. This is a 16th century Han Caravan Sarai. Oh. It's kind of a little oasis in the, yes. in the hustle and bustle of Eminönü. So Han means inn. There are more than 200 Hans in Istanbul because it has always been a very busy trade center, Istanbul, and a nat natural harbor for all the commercial ships. Goods coming from Egypt, Silk Road, let's say coffee. The coffee traders, coffee caravans always came here in this particular Han and their coffee that they brought, they brought from Ethiopia, from Yemen, from, from all these places, were distributed from here. So retail people, retail men in the area knew the particular day of coffee caravan visiting, coming. They would come and did their buy deal. The yes. they, they would buy their coffee. First floors was for the storage. They kept their coffees here. And there are so many rooms here, like 20, 30. Courtyard, today it became a cafe. Courtyard was for the animals. Wow. Camels and horses, you know, you would get your horse, their, their shoe fixed. Yeah, I can just imagine camels, yeah. horses, yeah, yeah. all around. And look at the little upper floor here. With yes. Them. And that was uh, where the traders stayed. Like, oh, okay, that's their hotel room. It, it, their hotel room, but free. In order to boost the trade, yeah. they used to be offered three-day free accommodation. And after weeks and weeks, after weeks, and weeks of, of, travel of travel to get here, that must have been very, very welcome. Exactly. And how old is this in? It's from the 16th century. This is an Han from 16th century. So coffee first was discovered in Ethiopia, but they boiled the coffee. Did you know coffee was first roasted in Ottoman land? No, 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 no. Let me show you a one very old oven for roasting coffee. It's an ancient coffee roaster. Look at the size. The size of it, look. Oh, wow. I had no idea it was going to be this big. <laughs> This place must have smelled absolutely amazing. Oh, yes, the smell. Mm -hmm. This is called künefe. It's a divine dessert. And make sure to have some baklava delight, but the Turkish desserts cannot be reduced to those two only. Künefe is wonderful. It's shredded pastry. In the middle, there's cheese. Ooh. And when you, it's like kind of melting because it's in, the, in between. And you see on charcoal, they kind of fry it on charcoal. And it looks like that. Wow. And it's sweet. And it's sweet. Sweet, but with cheese. It's too sweet, but with cheese. It's wonderful. Oh, and it's a neutral, good. wonderful cheese. It's from Syrian region. Yes. I also want to show you a very interesting soup. In Turkey, breakfast is very important, but it's not only and always a breakfast spread. As an alternative, you can come have some wonderful soup. 
Wow. Lentil soup, beiran soup. Today I just wanted to show you this soup called beiran. It's lamb soup, rendered lamb fat and lamb meat that is cooked in a broth on charcoal, eight to 10 hours. So very slowly cooked and it's got some rice in it. That's it, and it's delicious. It's divine. It's something that could warm you up for the day. If you're a shepherd living in the mountain, you need a breakfast that can keep you full for the day, and that is a little warmer. So this is what you need. It's the shepherd's soup, beiran. If you're here for a few days, come and enjoy some beiran here. And it's always served with a rocket salad. Rocket salad and lemon. So protein, vitamin, you got everything. everything. Key to find the good restaurants, of course, make your research, but wherever you go, make sure the thing is cooked. Whatever, whatever it is, vegetables, soup, or dessert, always on the charcoal. Look, mm. charcoal for the dessert, yeah. künefe. You never think charcoal the dessert. Charcoal for the liver, liver wrap. Yeah. Wow. It's the lamb liver. Anything that is cooked on charcoal will be tasty. No electric gas, but charcoal. Yes. Okay. Four spices we use very common in Turkish cuisine. Oregano, salt, cumin, chili flakes, and sumak. And this is his seasoning. Look, he's going to prepare some now, I guess. He's going to add some sumak in the onion mixture and season his liver, uh, liver uh, wrap with that. So this is called, it's carob. Oh, okay, I've heard of carob, but I've never seen it. This is called St. John's bread because according to Bible, John the Baptist survived in the wilderness of Israel yeah. chewing on this. Oh. It's called St. John's bread. What makes it interesting, it's an alternative chocolate. It's a sweet thing, but the um, seed inside. So this little one is called carrot, like yes. unit diamond, measure yes, for diamond. Yes, diamonds. Because back in old days, it's believed that all of these weigh 0 0.20. So um, old spice traders used the seeds as weighing. As, weigh, as weighing for weighing semi-precious stones. That's where we get the word carrot. That's, that's where we get the word carrot, because of the carob seed. That is carrot, fascinating. But of course, now I'm so glad we have technology today and better ways of <laughs> measuring precious diamonds. But this is the this is the word where the carrot comes from. Okay? Wow. Carob seed. So instead of going to Tiffany's and buying a diamond ring, <laughs> you just come here and buy 20 of those and uh -huh. you really nail it. And you can say that you have something, 20 carrots. Yeah, 20 carrots. <laughs> so Stephanie, this is another inn. Yes. But that the other one was renovated. Let's see one that is a little bit, you know, abundant, but still uh, nice and promising, Okay. I think. It's got Let's see. It's got the promise. Hopefully one day it'll look like the other one that we just saw Did today. Did the other one look like The this? other one looked just like this, yeah. Extraordinary, so, the difference. So imagine there are still in Istanbul around 200 of inns. This can tell you the volume of trade Absolutely 100 vast. years ago. Mm -hmm. So they would arrive by land, the spices, and leave by sea? Exactly. The mm. word caravan came from caravan. So caravans were traders yes. on the go, bringing good mm. stuff here. This one was for honey. Oh, wow. Specifically? Honey, specifically for honey. So the previous one was coffee. Previous one was for coffee. Mm. This is for honey from the 16th century. So I'm sure that when people arrived, they could bring news of what had been happening in distant lands. Exactly. Here yes. they'd hear Imagine. everything first. Coming from Egypt yes. Incredible. or places from different states of Ottoman Empire. Yes. Of course, they carried, they conveyed news gossips, yes, this would be the place stories. To be. This place would be the socializing <laughs> and hearing about mm. all what's happening in the far states of Ottoman Empire. Mm. Oh, tea. Lovely. Uh, I like these tea breaks. So like oh, yeah. When I do this, what would you do? That means, this means Çay istemek ya bu. Bana bir çay getir. Çay. Evet. Bir çay. Böyle yaptığı zaman kahve. This is coffee. Yeah. <laughs> this is tea. tea. <laughs> and I like this too. <laughs> ah, this is ah, this is oh yeah, yeah that's quite right. Yeah. So one, two, <laughs> and then quickly. <laughs> and this is quickly. Bring it, bring it over now. I needed this. Good night from Istanbul, everyone. I hope you also enjoy a delicious cup of tea. Ollie and I both look forward to seeing you again next week. Mm.